Good morning, pilgrims. It is day eight on the Camino Frances, doing it this time around on an e-bike. I'm in the city of Lyon, facing the cathedral. As you can tell, the sun hasn't come out yet, but we were kind of kicked out of the alberga this morning. Today, we have another massive day, maybe 73 kilometers long. We're going to leave the meseta behind. I was supposed to stay in Astorga, but I think I'm going to continue on an extra stage. Still planning to go to Fisterra, so who knows? Not as cold as it's been on the, over the last few days and zero wind, which is always uh, great. Let's go, and the ammo. Now, as we make our way out of town facing the Parador de San Marcos, we have this uh, statue of the pilgrim here just staring at the skies with his eyes uh, closed. This is also the split between the Camino Frances and the Camino de San Salvador, which takes you over the mountains into Oviedo. I did it already. I did it uh, last year, and it is one of the most beautiful Caminos that there are out there, other than the Primitivo and maybe the Vani Diense. So if you want to see that one, I highly recommend it. Now let's continue on our way out of Leon. And it is at La Virgen del Camino where we find ourselves at a crossroads. We can continue the official Camino path and follow this very busy road all the way to Hospital de Urbigo or better yet, we can take an alternative, an alternative that takes you right through the heart of the Paramo, through more desolate villages, more peaceful. I mean, it's up to you. By the way, fun fact, all these 12 statues of uh, the 12 apostles are facing Santiago de Compostela. So I guess the Camino is that way. As we make our way past the highway and under the overpass, we find ourselves on a peaceful backcountry road. The winding dirt trail takes us through the vast plateau of the Paramo, and the serene surroundings provide a much needed break from the concrete jungle. As we approach Oncina de la Val Doncina, the last water fountain and two charming albergues await. The asphalt path gives way to a dirt trail covering a distance of 5 kilometers before reaching the village of Chosas de Abajo. And it is in Chosas de Abajo where we find the most peculiar bell tower in the entire Camino, in Iglesia San Martín. Look at this place. Points for originality there. The road from Chosas de Abajo leads us through two quiet villages, each with its unique charm, before arriving at the town of Hospital de Orbigos, where the variant meets the official route. In Villar de Mazarife, the Gothic style Iglesia de San Miguel awaits, boasting a stone in stone facade and a single bell tower that houses a family of white storks. And in Villar de Mazarife, what can we say about this distinguished gentleman? The church Renaissance influences add a touch of elegance to a simple exterior and the relic of the true cross is a testament to the town's rich history. Mm -hmm. 
I came across the last 300 kilometer marker to Santiago. It's hard to believe that we have already covered over 400 kilometers on the Camino in just over one week. Villa Vante marks the final village on our detour and its retro style water tower and the Iglesia de la Virgen de las Candelas are two of its most notable features. almost 11 in the morning and the alternative and the official path joined at uh, Hospital de Urbigos. We're 17 kilometers away from Astorga and about 37 from uh, Rebanal del Camino where I'm heading today. By the way, I had a little mid-morning snack, just some orange juice and a slice of uh, tortilla. And while I was there, I made a phone call, made a reservation at the private albergue where I will be staying today. Check out this bridge. The 19 arch Puente de Orvigos is a remarkable sight, stretching over 200 meters and offering a glimpse into the town's medieval past. In the 15th century, a medieval knight named Suero de Quiñones staged a tournament on the bridge, challenging any knight who crossed it to a jousting match. Quiñones successfully defended the bridge for a month, defeating over 500 challengers. The 12th century church of San Juan de la Cruz is home to a 15th century carved stone altarpiece and a 16th century image of the Virgin Mary, which is believed to have been carried by pilgrims along the Camino. Pilgrims have the option of continuing down the M120 road next to a busy highway all the way to Astorga or taking a right turn leading them back to the countryside, where the plains of La Meseta gradually give way to the first hill seen since Burgos. The Astorga medieval walls are a stunning set of defensive structures surrounding the historic center, stretching over two kilometers. The walls are home to multiple towers and gates that were strategically placed to protect the city. Facing La Plaza Mayor is the Episcopal Palace designed by the Catalan architect Antoni Gaudi. Interestingly, I encountered Gaudi's work on the Camino del Norte in the town of Comillas. At the heart of the city is the Cathedral of Santa Maria, built over 300 years in various styles from the 15th to 18th centuries. The cathedral's exterior is adorned with intricate stone carvings and a towering bell tower dominates the skyline. It is 12.15 in the afternoon, made it to Astorga. It's starting to warm up. What a great church, what a great town. We're about uh, 20 kilometers away from Rabanal del Camino where I'm going to be staying today. It's going to be an easy couple of hours going uphill slowly. So maybe I should get a bite to eat here before I head out. We'll see. was the first town after Astorga and I decided to stop there at Bar Felix because it was already 1 p.m. and I went for the menu del dia which was like 12 euros. I started off with pasta and then chicken with uh, grilled vegetables. Cup of red wine as usual and I didn't want to have dessert or coffee. The last stretch into town now. Let's go. As we depart from Marias de Camino, the trail shifts to a dirt path that leads to the stony mountain range in the distance.
stone fences and close the path leading to Santa Catalina de Somoza, where the first of several albergues can be found. Across the street from the Iglesia Parroquial de Santa Maria, a bar provides tired pilgrims with shade and refreshments. It is time to say goodbye and embark on the final 10 km stretch to Rebanal del Camino, my final destination for the day and where I will rest for the night. Well guys, here we are in Rebanal del Camino, made it like around 2 p.m., 75 km a day. The last stretch was just going up steadily. I'm not all the way at the top, that's gonna have to take place tomorrow. But believe me, I thought about it. I thought about continuing on all the way to Ponferrada, which for would have been a long day but you know once I make it to the summit tomorrow which is only a few hundred meters in elevation gain from here from there all the way to Ponferrada it's just a straight shot so you know it wasn't like a crazy idea and I saw a group of uh, Brazilians that I haven't seen in a couple of days and that's what they were doing but now I'm glad that I stayed because it got overcast it got really really cold and it started drizzling so I would have gotten wet today so it was a good call. Tomorrow I'm gonna go over that pass, make my way all the way down to Ponferrada, and then continue on all the way to Villafranca del Bierzo. But then I may go a little further than that to Trabadelo, just before the second climb and final one to Osebredo. I'm staying at Albergue El Pilar, which uh, I'm so glad that I made a reservation because as soon as I got here, there were pilgrims being turned away and it was only 2 p.m. It is fully packed. I got a bottom bunk bed. I made myself my little fortress. And uh, you know, what can I say? Just another gorgeous day on the Camino. While I was uh, there in the patio looking at all those beautiful flowers, a pilgrim from Australia recognized me. She was so nice. We were talking there for a while. And I guess I have someone to talk to today because for the most part, everywhere I go, I'm the new kid in school. I already mentioned this, but it's funny because that's the biggest difference in uh, cycling the Camino or walking the Camino. Most of the people that I see doing it on a bike, they come with a friend or a family member. And I think that's the way to go. If you come on your own, then it's more because you like the solitude and you want to be on your own for a while, which is another way of doing the Camino. Well, here we are walking through the streets of Rabanal del Camino. What a great little town. Sun is setting, it stopped raining. It is very, very cold. I think it's going to be one of those days where I'm really going to take advantage of my down quilt. Because yesterday in Lyon at the albergue they left all the windows closed and it got very, very hot. I was just sleeping there with nothing. Just my clothes, no quilt, no liner, but that's how it goes. So I just had a dinner. I didn't know what to get. The lady there uh, recommended the eggs with York and it was very nice. <laughs> I had it with a beer. And uh, let's talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be one of those tricky days where I really don't know how to gauge it. Why? Because we have the climb to uh, Cruz de Fierro, which I'm going to use just a little bit of battery to get there. And then there's a descent that goes all the way down to the base of the climb to Osebredo. So that's a long stretch. I'm talking about probably over 40 kilometers where I won't really need to use the uh, the battery on the e-bike so I don't know I'm trying to get a place in uh, Trabadelo yeah just before the climb to Osebredo but if I get there and I manage to get to the top of Osebredo then I can go all the way down to Sarria without using much of my battery so that's the plan for tomorrow I have a place pre-booked already and I have another one that they're gonna call me in case they cancel the or somebody doesn't show up or I can just keep on going and maybe make it to Sarria 
If I make it to Sarria, by all means, I'm going to Fisterra. I had a few uh, pilgrims uh, telling me in, the, in my Facebook uh, group that are doing the Camino right now that the stretch from Sarria to Santiago is extremely busy right now that I should be booking in advance. I would only be there really for one day. I will stay in Sarria, which I'm sure there's plenty of places to stay, and maybe in Melide or maybe closer to Arzua. And then instead of staying in Santiago, I'm just going to continue on down the Camino de Fisterra and stay somewhere along the line. And then uh, the next day, they make it to Fisterra, take the bus back to Santiago. I already booked that one night that I'm going to be staying in Santiago before flying back home. So yeah, one of those days, we'll take it one step at a time. And, uh, you know, there was a group of, or there is a group of Mexicans at the at the albergue and they have spent the entire afternoon just drinking and singing which has been nice <laughs> nice little change uh, to the to the routine it's not rainy man that's always great news all right guys see you tomorrow 7 7 30 maybe 8 o'clock